Guys, welcome back to School of Calisthenics. This is part two of our beginner's ring series and today we're focusing on pushing movements. If you haven't yet clicked subscribe, make sure you click that button below so you don't miss out on any of our other content. We'll get started this week's lesson. So our first exercise is going to be the humble push-up but we can add a little bit of extra complexity into it by using the rings and it's two actually really effective ways of making push-ups more difficult. The first one being that the rings create some instability so we have to manage that, that's great for our shoulder development and shoulder robustness but the second thing is we can get really low. When we do rings uh, push-ups on the floor without the rings we hit a dead spot where we can't go any lower. The rings being elevated means we get a much um, deeper range of movement and we can start to work through into some nicer positions there to get more um, load through the upper body, chest and triceps. So Dave's doing those really nicely, he's keeping midsection tight, bums on, so we're gonna hold this shape. What we don't wanna do is see this back arching and falling through and away. So keep that nice, long, strong position. And if you wanna make these easier, that's a great thing about the rings is they're super progressive. All we've gotta do is walk the feet forwards, and then Dave can drop in. This just changes the load a little bit, makes it a bit easier, and he can start to just train at a point which is effective and um, appropriate for where he's at. And that is our ring push-up. Yeah, we're gonna look at ring dips now. And just like push-ups being a great standard basic exercise, the dip is exactly the same, but we're gonna use the rings and it's gonna require more shoulder stability and give us that challenge without having to, um, having to add extra load once you get good at dips on the bars. So uh, well, note on that, as Tim jumps up to the top, with, if you're not used to rings, you first of all, you've gotta get used to this instability of the ring. It wants to, it wants to create this like, shaking on the rings. You've gotta get nice and stable at the top there before you do anything else. So make sure you've got that nice top position. Shoulders in a good position. You've got nice separation between the shoulders and the ears. He's not hiking those shoulders up. So then once he goes, what he's gonna do is go into his ring dip. He's gonna lean forward, takes himself down, elbows stacked on top of the on top of the wrist and elbows pointing backwards rather than shooting out to the side. He does that by maintaining those thumbs pointing forward rather than letting those rings turn in. You see those elbows shoot out to the side. That puts a lot of stress on the front of the shoulder and can lead to eventual injury if you carry on uh, repeatedly putting that shoulder in that poor sort of forward rounded position. So they can be difficult when you're just starting out. So what we can do is use a nice tool from Rocker B would be eccentric, so which just means the lowering portion of the movement. So that'll be lowering down under control, and that's the key, all the way through so you can work full range, but you don't have to worry about getting up because you're just gonna put your feet on the floor, then you jump up for your next rep. We wanna work at like five, 10 seconds on our eccentric, making sure you've got control, not just falling down. The other thing we can do whilst we've got working, that's gonna work our full range, but we're obviously only doing the, the lowering part. We can also work some partial range reps where Tim's just gonna to go to a range that he still feels he's got control and driving back up from there. Whilst maintaining all those good um, technique points, thumbs point forward, elbows going backwards, shoulders in that nice position creating some tension around the back of the shoulder. On that one guys, the partial dip, just make sure that you're not finding that range by going in here. You really still wanna keep tall and it's gotta be the elbow bend which is creating that drop, yeah. not just lowering down and taking your shoulders towards your ears. So our next exercise is gonna be a variation. We're gonna look at tight rider push-ups and an archer push-up. We're gonna go for tight rider first because it's slightly easier. So we're gonna bring the rings up a little bit for this one. If you go super close to the ground, then it puts a lot of load on. So again, we'll show you in a minute how you can progressively load this. But you start off in your push-up position and the tight rider, I'm gonna get Jacko to lower into it. Now the one arm's gonna come in, it's gonna rest in here and it's gonna hold that quite tight while the opposite side then just reaches out to the side. The reason this is easy is because this creates a bit of a stable base to rest on whilst that arm kind of goes out into that, into that outside position. You can see again, you can sit in there quite nicely. It's nice and strong, ring close to the body, provides some support to be able to move that shoulder or that hand out to the side. The difference with the, with the typewriter, the archer, sorry, is it's gonna drop in. We're gonna do those two things at the same time. So as he lowers down, then we're gonna to start to, so we're gonna get the arm moving out at the same time as he's lowering into the position. So rather than coming down, sitting into it and then going, this one just happens both at the same time. You've still got a strong position at that bottom shape with the arm tucked in close tight to the body, but there's a lot more tension to manage on the way down. You want to make it easier? Yes, if you want to make it, if you want to make it easier, just bring the feet further forward. Again, changing the ring angle just means there's a less load going through the shoulders and upper body, and we can still work exactly the same progressions, but which is a little bit easier with a little bit less demand on the upper body. 
So next up we're looking at um, the ring fly, which is a lovely um, progression on from those archer pull-ups where we're building up some strength uh, with the arm right out, the, out to the side, uh, requiring a lot of shoulder stability around uh, the back and front of the shoulder together and it's both arms going out at the same time trying to keep stretch we're almost going to be a stretch on like the bicep when we pull back through it's really working on your chest but at the same time because of the instability of the rings it's challenging that shoulder stability the whole time and maintaining that body alignment as tim does a great job calls locked in nice and tight like he's ready to take a punch bums on strong and if he needs to make this a little bit more easy for himself again simply you walk the feet forward you're in a more upright position therefore he makes the, the the exercise a little bit easier because there's less load going going through your joints when you're working on that one thing to be careful that one guys when you finish your rep don't be cheating by sticking your bum out and coming up in a bent position you've got to keep that nice straight line and the other thing is to make sure when you're going down to a nice long strong shoulder position you really squeeze the chest as you come out of that it's quite easy to pop yourself back up so give it a nice nudge as you come out of that bottom position yeah, all about creating tension is it so our next exercise is going to incorporate a bit of pushing strength but we also want to link that into the core that's such an important part of our progressions in our hand balance in particular that we can stabilize the shoulder but keep good control of the midsection as well so we're going to call this a feet elevated plank pushback so it's real simple jacko is just going to place his feet up on the rings and then all he has to do is go into a push-up position and this doesn't look like a lot but when you try it just be really conscious that actually the load comes on pretty quickly so from here we might just play around bringing the the, the feet backwards and he starts to push push into this long shape and it's just holding this tight. When you go backwards, what you're gonna feel is that back is gonna to wanna to arch. So keep that midsection locked in tight, just like you would do in a hollow body position or a hollow rock. And then you're starting to get some real development and some strength in the shoulders as you're making that lever nice and long. Real focus, keep tight and only go through a range which you can control. There's no point taking the feet miles back if you're doing half of the movement with a broken or banana bent back type position. So that's part two of our beginner's ring workout. It's hopefully it's given you some great ideas that you can go away and work. And if you've got any questions about those exercises, comment below. If you've got any questions about any other of your calisthenics training, pop them in the questions uh, comments below. Just to reiterate guys, we talked about this in the first video, but it's such a cheap training tool. You can get them for, for next to nothing off Amazon. And it's really effective. You can come outside, you can train with them, take them anywhere, travel with them. And it's really like, if I've got nothing else, we've got a set of rings, yeah. I'm happy. I can get a workout done. The big, the big rig is optional. That could just be a tree be branch. A tree. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Um, and if you want, if there's any other content or things you want us to, to, to tutorials or lessons you want us to do on, like this came out of somebody asking us yeah. about ring workouts for beginners. Uh, so put them in the comments below and we, we want to give you what you want so you can keep on progressing and redefining your impossible. If you haven't clicked subscribe, make sure you do that by Tim Z so you don't miss out on any of other content. The free beginner's guide is a must if you haven't got that yet and you're just starting out because it's free. Um, and that's down there. And then the last one up by there is one of our other lessons. Till next time guys, class dismissed. dismissed.